Hello everybody and welcome to a Planet Coaster video. This is actually going to be starting a new series here on the channel, something I want to see for a while. This is going to be the first build update video, I want to do these every now and then. So this one's going to be a full tour of the park, as it is right now. So starting here, uh, down by some of the road infrastructure, this is an all of it, this is going to connect to a larger road that leads to the main car park, so those are going to be kind of like Alton Towers that are a bit further away. Here we also have a coach park, and so I've started with some of the road markings and stuff, and then you have these kind of planters here, so the park entrance is that way, but we'll get to that in just a second. This is a semi-realistic park, so over here I have a little delivery area, so you can see we've got some spare signs, bits of theming, some benches, some bins, and here's just like a very basic delivery office. The guest services, this is actually where the guests spawn in, it's all hidden back here along with a first aid thing, and there's also an information booth, there's lots of information booths around the park. So you've got guest services, this here was a gift shop but it's actually going to become a security hub, um, and the main gift shop is actually going to be inside the park now. There's then theme park tickets on either side, just more information booths. Toilets, uh, this staff only is another guest spawner. And finally over here we have annual passes and fast track in their own little building. And of course these buildings have like little kind of rest areas around the back and all the doors and electrical boxes are in there. So let's head into the park. See so if we go through the turnstiles, uh, we find ourselves on Farley Avenue, which is the main street of this park. There's also the in park toilets on this side, same building as the other ones. And yeah, you've got the Wave Swinger, which is kind of the centerpiece attraction, a little bit like uh, Fantasialand. But if we head on over this way, there's a couple of things over here. There are these two food units at the moment. There's also a sky ride to the spooky area, which is over the back where you can see that wing coaster. I think this here will be a large restaurant. Uh, the gift shop I was talking about will be right here uh, with the western stuff behind it. And then, yeah, uh, I started a couple of the main street buildings. There's a hat fantastic shop right here. And then right next to it, we have a... Uh, Le, Le Bon Son, I don't know how you say it. There is some music here of course. Uh, I found this cool TMTK item. Uh, this kind of logo in the glass here. And then inside it's kind of kitted out like a little restaurant. With some tables and chairs. Uh, you've got the order and collect, so there's those. And let's head down to the first themed area, which is the kids area, that's the gardens. Yeah, so this is the gardens. This is like the kids area of the park. Uh, we've got a small roller coaster at the back there. We'll go for a ride in just a second. There's also a log flume. There's uh, four flat rides. And there's also a car ride, which is very, very popular. Uh, there's no theming on these yet, but I've done the queues, apart from the roller coaster in this area, to kind of be a bit kind of all over the place. There isn't really that much cat or pen work going on. But yes, yeah, so let's ride the flume.
So yeah, that was the flume. Really small log flume, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. But yeah, so next to it we have the car ride, uh, which has a massive queue. No idea what I want to if I want to have some sort of theme to it or just have it through the gardens because the gardens look is this kind of thing, lots of coloured flowers and all sorts of that stuff. Does for a second entrance round over here, so you can walk through this area if you want to, just like that. But before we leave the gardens, I think we need to go for a ride on the Bug Coaster. This is a Junior Wendigo ride. But yeah, let's go for a ride on the Bug Coaster, as it's currently called. So yeah, that's the bug coaster. Very small, but it does run two trains pretty decently. Uh, even when you're loading the whole train, it rarely gets stuck on the brakes. They've got a little transfer track, as well as this section here where they can store a train if it's not working, as well as easily get like take them off the track for winter maintenance. But yeah, here you've got the big wheel. It's uh, perfectly lined up with a seating area that's actually just on the other side here. But yes, there's four flat rides. There's a Roctopus. I think this is the free flyer, and there's the Coriolis and the big wheel. But yes, so now we can leave the gardens and head towards the most complete themed area. This is Storm Valley. Um, most of it's most of the area parts done. It's actually the roller coaster that needs it the most work now. The mine train over here. But yeah, this is the the entrance sign. I'm really happy with how it turned out. There's a hotel, the Black Stallion, so called because of this cool piece that I found. Yeah, so you can see there's like a couple of bits here that aren't actually themed yet, but we've got the big runaway train sign, and the big centerpiece here is this giant train. But the first of all, let's have a look at the flat ride. This is Whirlwind. Uh, let's see, I've also got like, these uh, safety boards. You see, this is a level two. These are going to be custom queue time boards. If you've ever been to somewhere like Alton Towers or Chessington, you'll know they have these boards outside the rides. But yes, this is the Whirlwind queue line. Looks like it's quite popular as it always is. This is the last building left to theme around this queue line, and then it'll be done. But yeah, if I kind of go through here, there's loads of buildings. You've got a sheriff's office, there's even a jail back here, there's a bank. Uh, there's a tool shop, there's a saloon, there's your undertakers, and you've also got the hotel, of course. Then, yeah, it's just one of these rides. And, of course, well, we'll go around the park at night uh, at the end. But I think we need to go on the runaway train. For realism, they all have mm, very long queue lines. I've measured this. This can hold 105 minutes worth of queue. So it is a very long line. I have included these uh, in most most of the coaster queues so far, these kind of skip sections where they could easily cut off a part of the queue. Here there's like a evacuation door. This is actually this actually would lead to the second left tail base, which is right over there. And they'd be able to evacuate people off that into the queue line. Yeah, we get round here and you can actually see the coaster around you. Wow, look at that perfect timing. And yeah, it heads over that way. And so there's a few Easter eggs here. There goes the roller coaster again. Uh, with the next train to. So you've got Thunder Mesa, which I believe is a town from one of the big Thunder Mountain rides. And Red Rock is a western area that I built for a different park like three or four years ago that never got finished. But yeah, then we enter the station, which of course has Planet Group Bluegrass playing. Yeah, it's got all the realism bits from the. Uh, the road boards to the dots on the floor. Got some theming. I've skinned the operator booths for this and the other coaster we're going to go on later. It's themed. You've got storage bins. This has got some bags and a couple of crisp packets in it. 
Uh, but yeah, this is the runaway trains. Let's get hop on this one and go for a ride. So yeah, that's the runaway train. I really hope you enjoyed it. Well, you can actually go down to the ride photo booth, which um, I've got kitted out with some people and some computers. And of course, all this will have custom screenshots. There's also actually a Vista point hidden inside the booth. So you'll find uh, people kind of admiring the ride photos. And if we go down this path, this is uh, Farley Grove, which actually has a restaurant. This was originally flat, but then I lowered the whole thing. But yeah, I'm super happy with how this whole thing turned out. But yeah, so this is the restaurant. Not the only one in the park, but there's an entrance and an exit. And uh, it kind of like nestled into the side of the, of the hill here. The park's newest area, which is Buccaneers Bay. But yeah, it's got audio, it's got triggers, it's got effects, it's got a lot of stuff. I guess you've got a balloon shop on here, we've got guest services, information. Uh, this is actually the newest building that I've done here. This is a hat shop, but I've called it Tricorns because that is what those are called, kind of. Um, you've got the shipwreck sign, which is again nabbed from that other park. You can even kind of see the light there. Here we've got a, uh, an ice cream shop. Uh, the inside of this needs to be done. Those were one toilet. Staff building, coffee shop. And we've got a pizza shop over here, and then over here, this was built for me by Rai after I did the spotlight of his park. Uh, we've got sausages, uh, uh, like hot dogs or whatever they are, I think that's what they are. Gulpy drinks and also fries or chips. And then over here we have the pirate ship. Which is uh, a pirate ship. Uh, but I thought it'd be kind of cool that the park, the areas of the park would have spruced it up with the refresh of the area. 
Yes, yeah, so there's some canopies, there's some little bits of theming here and there. And then you've got the pirate ship itself. And uh, there we, there's music, of course. I do need to add in the uh, get fill in the gaps on these sides here, though. Something I should need to do soon. But yeah, so that is the pirate ship. That's the supporting flat ride in this area. You can also hear some of the music I've been putting in. And then we've got shipwrecked. You see, it's a uh, rated five uh, on the thrill thrill measuring scale or whatever it's called. Uh, as this is one of those uh, custom queue time boards I was talking about. Uh, these, these still might change. But yeah, so the shipwrecked queue line is around half themed. Yeah, there are these, uh, again, kind of shade se shade sections. Uh, something I need to do in some of the other queue lines is add shade. But yeah, so this building needs a lot of work on the inside. But I have started with some of the, some wooden pillars and stuff. But yeah, so if we head through here, you can go over the bridge. There's like little glass viewing spots. You can actually see the coast as it comes round right underneath you, which I think is kind of cool. In fact, here it comes right now. You can go walk under the outer bank, and it's like, yeah, if you get to walk down here, it's very cool because the roller coaster is literally right above you. There's also a cool f new fountain effect around the lake now. But yeah, so, bit another cattle pen down the end here be a cool view of the zero G roll, and it flies next to you right here. You can see the outer bank just there. Some more of these uh, shade canopies. And then of course the Don't Die Fencing, where you've got to walk under coaster track. Uh, but yeah, this is the current station for shipwrecks. It is almost done, I'd say. There's a couple more details I want to add on the on the walls. But apart from that, let's, uh, let's get on shipwrecked. But of course, like the runaway train, it's got all the... Um, the road numbers, it's got like baggage, things, and this is the operated cabin. Let's go for a ride on the shipwreck. So that was shipwrecked. I really hope you enjoyed. Uh, probably not the smoothest ride because we did uh, look forward on the last car, but yeah, you need to go on the last car to see all the triggered effects, and you can see kind of the lighting rigs up in the the roof, which uh, yeah, realism stuff. But yeah, as we exit, we got the ride photos. I forgot if there's a vista point here or not. This one I want to do a bit more work on because it's uh, not as detailed as the other ride photos, booth in the park. Yeah, so that is Buccaneers Bay. It's uh, as the, the plaza area is definitely pretty much complete. Once that building's done and the inside of that's done, it will only be the shipwrecked ride area to, to do. And if you saw it on the ride, there is this big old cliff with the um, western area, and you can see here I've started work on uh, covering that up. So this will kind of go all the way along there, and hopefully. Hide, hide the western area a bit more, but this isn't going to be Disney, you will be able to see different areas. Yeah, there's three very intense rides here. We've got this flat ride, 
there's flat ride and then a very very intense yeah and there's loads of stuff the only part that's theme is the back section so after this zero g roll from there it's themed for now but um yeah that's only where it's done because i still need to figure out what the theme is you can see i've marked out these buildings uh, but i still don't actually know what they're going to look like just yet yeah, if you come around here you see some very nice interaction with the coaster and the queue line uh, such as this helix. This is very Nemesis inspired is what I will say. There's intense helixes, the inversions are quite similar. That's the only one that isn't found on Nemesis. Uh, but yeah, so let's go for a ride on the currently unnamed B&M invert. So yeah, that's the invert, as you can see, very nervous and inspired, especially this section here, which just turns in a couple of fast inversions. This part here is themed, uh, I'm very happy with how it has been themed. You can see just how fast it takes some of these elements here. Makes for a very intense ride, but yeah, so that's the invert, and that's actually everything that's really kind of had any work done to it so far. There is this wing coaster, uh, which I've done a little bit on. But that's just mostly figuring out the path system and the queue lines, like with the, the bridges that have to go over the left and right system. Uh, there's also going to be a dark ride up here, and I put this flat ride because I thought it'd be fun. This is the other end of the sky ride. You can see it's a sky ride to Farley Avenue. And yeah, it passes over the wing coaster. This, if you're wondering, uh, this is going to be what would be a scare maze. Uh, you'd have it inside this building. This is here's the exit. So it will have like a little advert for the scare event. And there will be a couple of other ones dotted around here and there. In terms of what's still to come, there's going to be a hyper coaster from B&M, of course. Uh, an RMC, a uh, dive coaster. And then here I'm going to have a river rapids, but with the GCI running coaster kind of, not really dueling it, but kind of going around it. By the way, when it comes to evacuation points, this door here uh, would lead to here. As you can see, it hasn't been used in a while. This is the, uh, the maintenance shed for the runaway train. Where they can take the trains off for winter maintenance. But yeah, so that's runaway train. Shipwrecked, this is the maintenance area. It's also it's dual and it also serves the invert. Taking a very quick look at the park at night, you can see I've done some work on the lighting. The main plaza has got all this white with these uplights along the buildings. If we move through to some of these buildings, they've got different types of lighting. This here has got lights on the side. Here is nothing really up top. The gardens have some nice green lights shining on their sign, which I'm quite happy with, but the area itself hasn't got any lighting. Storm Valley, I've used uh, Storm Lanterns, I mean it's in the name isn't it, uh, and those kind of surround it everywhere but I need to put some more around this part of the ride layout. Around here I've got some lanterns kind of hung from all the beams everywhere and I'm very happy with what, how it looks, but with all of this queue line it still needs work. And then with these connecting areas I've just spaced out some of these, but for Farley Grove 
I've actually used these more ornate looking ones, as well as hiding a few just here inside the actual building. And finally, if we move up towards Storm Valley, you can see there's quite a bit of lighting going on here, especially in this part of the queue line that's themed. Nothing out here just yet, and the coaster itself has its three signature elements, which are the Airtime Hill, the Junior Immelman, and the Roll, all done in nice blue. Finally, I'm just going to show you one of the ride camera systems that I've put in. These are in place on all three of the major coasters so far. And as you can see, it looks like they're taking on-ride photos. But yeah, that's Farley Park as it is. Uh, in terms of realism stuff, the car parks will be over here or something. And I'm thinking that in terms of resort activities, there's going to be a small hotel, or medium-sized hotel, kind of just here, in front of the RMC. And there'll also be like a gol golf, uh, go-kart track, and actually maybe a mini-golf, if I feel up to it. But um, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this kind of mini tour of the park so far. Uh, the next build update, don't know when it will be, might have some time lapses. But if you really want to catch some of the building work going on with this park, then the live streams that I do every now and then is what you want to watch. There's, there's a few archived already if you go to my channel page and go to the live tab. Uh, whilst you're there, please do... Subscribe, comment down below what do you think is your favourite ride that you've seen today in this tour. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye everyone.